Right back there is a new display here at the North Carolina Arboretum called Wicked Plants. Wicked Plants. We actually helped do a few of the videos for it, so I'm pretty excited that it's now up and running. To follow with that theme, I'd like to do a video today about weeds of mass destruction, invasive plants. By invasive plants, I'm talking about weeds that are introduced from somewhere else that have come here and are causing big problems. Now, I'm not talking about things like apples, which are from Central Asia that are here, because they're not really causing a lot of problems. I'm talking about plants like this one, kudzu. Kudzu was introduced in 1876 from Japan, and it seemed like a good idea because it had these really beautiful flowers and it controlled erosion. But it's causing huge problems because it grows like crazy. You see, it overgrows buildings, it overgrows cars, it takes down power lines. It's just causing a lot of problems. Let me give you some of my background real quick. I actually worked for four years in college at an aquatic plant research facility where we, we looked at invasive plant species and tried to figure out how to eliminate the problem. And then after I did that, I spent about two years roaming the country looking for all kinds of different invasive plant species. Myconia. Coster's curse. Yeah, I'm going to try out an airboat and making a guide so that conservation officers could identify and then help control the problem in their area. So the point of me telling you that is that I was able to see a lot of the invasive plant species and I can tell you that they're a big problem right now. For instance, take water hyacinth. People grow it in their ponds, but occasionally it escapes and it causes huge problems because here you have a plant that grows like three feet tall and it floats on the water surface and it doubles its population every two weeks. So do the math on that. Now, another plant that's very similar is giant salvinia. Giant salvinia is a floating fern, but it doubles its population every two days. But you got a mat like that, and it won't get any light down to any plants that are trying to grow from underneath, like native plants. And think about what it does to the oxygen. Now take hydrilla. It's considered the worst invasive plant species in the US. It doesn't float, it actually has roots that go into the ground, but then it floats up and it has this stem that can go six to 10 feet down. If you're trying to swim in that area, you could get tangled up and drowned. If you're trying to boat through it, it'll clog up your motors. One of the misconceptions people have is that plants will release oxygen into the water, which they do when the sunlight is shining. But when the sunlight is not shining, they actually take in oxygen from the water. So at night, they absorb all the oxygen from the water and fish populations are just dying left and right because of these invasive plant species. It's really important that we all know what's native, what's not native, what's invasive, so that you can say, take your own backyard and you can go out and eliminate the invasive species and plant new ones in their place. If you want to learn more about invasive plant species, follow this link.